in the city, we did have the uh, free Wi-Fi. And uh, so I wonder if uh, your commission has collaborated with any city department on the GIS, using the GIS mapping to identify the particular neighborhoods in need of the um, free Wi-Fi. For example, I think from the, the mayor's discussion, for example, we know some particular neighborhoods are really in need for the free Wi-Fi service and hopefully will be identified. And so that's just my, uh, my uh, question. And the second one is that you ask for the library, uh, you mentioned a library garage uh, connectivity. I would like to table it to Kelly because I understand they are currently already uh, programs in place from the county. So Kelly, would you like to explain a, a bit about what library currently has? Then I will turn back to Johnny uh, if, uh, for the GIS portion. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, we, uh, I can't remember the exact date, but a couple of months ago, we actually did upgrade Wi-Fi and extend it to the parking lot at, in the library. So we currently have coverage on the complete um, first floor of the parking lot, the second floor, and up and through to the third floor as well. So we have some signs put up there and we have Wi-Fi antennas in the parking lot at, um, installed a couple of months ago. Okay. And um, outside of the library building, the in front, the library front, okay, the Wi-Fi connection over there has been always very good. The reason is that I saw a lot of people playing Pokemon for a couple of <laughs> years. So they, they are total, I think, five stops just between the library and the Valley Medical Health Center. So I can attest the Wi-Fi connectivity in front of the library is pretty good. And yeah, thank you, Kelly, for the uh, front as well. And, yeah. and Kelly, um, if you don't mind, could you, can, uh, could you let us know who exactly you were coordinating, coordinating with at the city? Um, because the IT department that we're working with was unaware of the um, effort. So that would be a huge help for us to connect our liaisons to, um, to ensure. And, and Chair, just to your um, reference of a previous Wi-Fi, um, the previous attempts, there was actually two efforts done. And the focus was primarily on public safety. And what had happened over the course of the two times that Wi-Fi was deployed, um, really it ultimately came down to operations and maintenance to sustain, you know, because the equipment constantly evolves. And um, also I just learned that um, not all of the uh, power sources is 24 seven. So that's another issue. So meaning you can have Wi-Fi when the solar is available, but it may not be operational like in the evening when it really matters, you know? So, um, so that's kind of the things that we still are in the very infancy stage of trying to figure out where exactly. Um, uh, but to, to so, so Kelly, whatever comment, uh, whatever feedback, if you can provide that to um, John, that'd be a huge help or Renee, either, either one that'd be helpful for us. Um, and then also um, to the whole commission with regards to the GIS, we did actually collaborate with city staff in compiling um, a GIS, you know, just understanding the um, census tract information. So better, you know, understanding where the um, areas of financial, social economic status, um, you know, there is some data on digital availability, but it's not very accurate and pretty outdated. So that's why we want to do a survey as well. Um, but we do feel there is some benefit, um, you know, possibly utilizing city facilities to broadcast outdoor Wi-Fi. Um, so, so that's something that we're, we really want to explore and it could help reduce ongoing costs and maintenance because you can leverage um, you know, the connectivity indoors and broadcast it outdoors. So there, there's some costs associated to that, but at least it's a um, smaller scale that could be beneficial um, for anyone who wants to get outdoor Wi-Fi access. Yeah, I see a couple Bay Area cities like Mountain View and a couple others, they have citywide the free Wi-Fi. And as you mentioned, the previous projects uh, encounter the challenges of, for example, if it's solar powered and what to do with 
when the uh, solar power was not available in the evening. Of yeah. course, I think with the city power, the city lights, for example, the, everywhere where the city light pole is, as a possibility, you can install the, the potential Wi-Fi standard and yeah. the, on it. And also, I think a couple different projects by different vendors, like the Amazon Sidewalk and a couple other projects. That's definitely we would like to see our city new people. Because I remember when the city had the free outdoor Wi-Fi, it's kind of funny because I know some neighbors, somehow they got very bad uh, Wi-Fi signal uh, in-house, they stepped out. So you sometimes you saw people on yeah. the street using the free Wi-Fi. That's definitely a, a huge community benefit people enjoy. But getting back to the, uh, you know, the equity issue, definitely we would like to see, you know, the, the community, uh, uh, the uh, communities uh, which f uh, face the challenges will get this opportunity to Absolutely. get access to. And uh, Kevin, Phil, do you want to add anything? In yeah, we're we're just trying to find out as much as we can right now about uh, the the Mopias population and how much of a demand there would be for such you know free public Wi-Fi access. But it's a really good sign that you guys already have implemented free public Wi-Fi um, at the Mopias Library. And I don't, I'm not aware if, well, at least Rajani and I were not aware that there was, you know, dedicated Wi-Fi set by the library. So um, I felt like if the public knew about that, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of more demand. But uh, yeah, city staff, um, our liaison, Daniel Nam, um, he saw that there were people, you know, staying outside the library using Wi-Fi. And I personally have dro uh, driven by and seen people in front of the library, you know, on their laptops using it. Um, so that's a really good sign. And I feel like if there's any way we can learn about your customer base and maybe the amount of usage for your Wi-Fi services, um, that would further reinforce, you know, our case to have that, uh, more locations uh, implementing free public Wi-Fi. We're currently like, um, you know, checking out some locations. One of them was Mopius Library, but it seems like you guys are, already have it. Um, but like another potential location could be like Mopius Sports Center, like the parking lot area. So, yeah. yeah, and that could have a dual purpose because that's also our emergency uh, emergency response location. Um, also, our older adults that there's a huge benefit with City Hall and the older, you know, just the senior center, um, just to really ensure that there's um, socialization. Um, I know there's a digital literacy component that that's definitely a need, but at least let's start getting connectivity um, to those that really need it. And, and Chair, just, and for the commission, just background, I, in my day job, I work for the city of San Jose. So we've been deploying a lot of outdoor Wi-Fi in uh, our most vulnerable communities. And so I will say this is costly. So I do wanna level set expectations with this commission and just, you know, city staff. Um, really, you know, it, it really takes a village. And, you know, unfortunately we don't have Google in the city of Milpita. So maybe there's some opportunities, Google can come here. Um, so that's why Mountain View might be successful. Uh, so, um, you know, but then we do have Cisco. So maybe there's a, a partnership that we can have. But to that point, it's, it's very costly to do the ongoing operations and maintenance. So, so that's the piece that I think uh, just want to be realistic um, on what are the expectations. So that's why we're kind of starting small. And, and as the popularity grows, then maybe there is a demand and a possible different cost you know, sharing agreement that the city can, you know, pursue. But again, identify the demand first. Definitely, I agree. I see the previous uh, city free Wi-Fi project uh, was terminated due to lack of funding. Once again, I, I to my understanding, that project was uh, sponsored by vendors. And uh, it looks like you are already exploring the possible vendors. Definitely, you know, hopefully Cisco, if Cisco will step in, <laughs> who knows, right? <laughs> but at least, you Figure know- Figure out the use cases first. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. We, uh, in, small, uh, in small phases to roll out to the most needed communities, that would be great. And the one last thing, if anybody else has any questions for Kevin. And the, yeah. yes, yeah. I see Renee raised the hand. Yes, please. Yeah. 
So just real fast, we do have the city free public Wi-Fi at the Milpitas Community Center, Sports Center, and the Senior Center. So that's already there. It, it exists. I know at the Senior Center, especially with the nice uh, backdrop of our Civic Plaza, we have a lot of people that sit outside and utilize the Wi-Fi out there. Same thing with the Community Center. That was like a Pokemon hub as well. I heard the chair mention that at the library. Um, like, why are there 2,000 people walking in a circle around our buildings? Yeah. So that's there already. Um, okay. The exception of how far that goes into parking lots, you know, range equals dollars, but um, there are those services there um, for people who are with us. A lot of people set up with their laptops and hang out outside and indoors in our lobbies in a normal world. Um, so, but we can connect with yeah. you guys as well. Yeah, yeah that'd be helpful, Renee, if we can, um, at least with Daniel and... Uh, because um, uh, so what we've learned, um, we met with the school district, and um, you know uh, they do apparently offer free Wi-Fi in their parking lots, but uh, we need to confirm what's the actual coverage. It might be in their property, but not necessarily in the parking lots per se. Um, yeah. You know, so you know, and, and that's really what is the actual, you know, need is it do it, because of COVID and social distancing was needed, being in the parking lot might be better beneficial, but, you know, post COVID, you know, we don't yeah. know, right? So that's something yeah. to really think about. No, but good point. Thank you, Renee. Yeah, no problem. And for the library Wi-Fi project and uh, Actually, it's a county-wide system, Santa Clara County Library District project. So uh, may I ask uh, Kelly and uh, Jennifer if you would like to chip in and share any additional information with Rajani? Um, I think I, I would love to connect with Rajani and, and Kevin um, offline and, and share the information on the parking lot. But um, yeah, essentially, what, you know, we have nice coverage around the building now. Um, I think it was implemented in August. So um, it's been there for a few months and we, we do have some regular people that are able to access it from the parking lot or front of the building. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this Thank is really you. good to hear. Thanks for letting know, us, us know about that. And Renee, thanks for letting us know about the senior center um, and the sports center as well. We, we would definitely like to keep in touch with you. Um, in case we need to learn more about the Wi-Fi capabilities of those areas. All right. Thank you, Kevin. And thank, thank you, you Regine. Nice to see you this nice evening. Nice to meet okay. you all. Thank you for the time. Thanks, John. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And uh, our next item is the Use Essay Writing Contest 2021. We have a subcommittee led by LB and uh, with uh, Ha and uh, Heli uh, on the subcommittee. First, I would like to ask uh, LP if uh, LP can give us an update about the uh, proposal for five minutes, because right now it's 7.51 uh, for the interest of time. Let's keep it condensed because we already approved the, the event as a goal. We just uh, want to see the details and if anything, we we want to uh, modify. So first, uh, I would like to turn this to uh, LP. Yes, uh, good evening to everybody. <clears throat> uh, during our last meeting, we had uh, agreed to have collaborative uh, work with uh, the, the other commissions uh, if we cannot come up with our project. So on suggestion of uh, Council Member Evelyn, we met with the Youth uh, Commission together with the library. Uh, Kelly was present in there sometime in January and uh, the chair of the uh, youth commission, the advisor, and of course uh, I was there. So we had the meeting, we checked on what projects they're in and found out and find out how we can work collaboratively with them. Uh, they have two uh, uh, projects uh, that's in the pipeline, but uh, uh, actually they're still struggling to really work on it. The first one was the uh, uh, career day, which they scheduled it for uh, April or May. And uh, the other one is on the tobacco, tobacco awareness. So I presented this to uh, the subcommittee 
And we agreed that maybe we'll pick up the theme of uh, tobacco awareness uh, as a theme of the uh, of our project and uh, uh, awareness tobacco come up with the tobacco free society and we can come up uh, with a working relationship with uh, the youth commission. However, uh, since they're not yet ready and all this stuff, so we tried to come up with our own proposal. And uh, uh, here we have a copy of the draft proposal, which I go through it uh, very briefly. Okay, so we adopted the theme of tobacco awareness or tobacco free society. And as I mentioned earlier, this is one of the theme projects of the Youth Commission we want to adopt. Uh, we'll try to help them uh, spread uh, the awareness of the uh, uh, negative effects on tobacco and uh, marijuana and all these related uh, uh, concepts. And so that is the theme of the proposed uh, essay writing contest 2021 for Milpitas Youth. So uh, the suggested essay, essay prompt is, uh, do you support a free tobacco living? Okay. Uh, sorry uh, to interrupt, uh, Ms. Nair. I have a, I have a draft. Do you want me to share it in the screen? Well, I uh, sent the draft to yeah, John. Everybody has a copy, yeah. They have a copy, yeah. Yeah, everybody has a copy. Thank you, thank you. And uh, that, uh, and the, the, as I said, the prompt would be, do you support a free tobacco living lifestyle? And how do you raise awareness of its importance or negative impact to society, especially to the youth? So prospective contestants will be from Milpitas youth enrolled in grade seven to grade 12, considering that this is the age level of the youth commission. So, uh, as contestants, they need to fill out an entry form, which we have to distribute together with the flyer that will be sent when we will announce the contest and indicating their name, school, grade, they are enrolled in, contact information, etc., and all the information. And uh, I also sent a copy of the entry form. Okay. So uh, the flyer will contain the following. Length of entry, that's 350 to 400 words. Uh, a copy of the flyer was also attached. Type written, 12, pay, 12 points, double space, Times New Roman. Entries uh, together with the entry form will be emailed to the subcommittee chair, uh, LPS Tioko. At first, we decided that it will be sent to the three of us, but they said that uh, maybe that she, uh, we have to simplify the submission and just send it to one person. So we agreed that will be sent to me and then I will distribute that to uh, prospective judges. So uh, this is the proposal, the calendar proposal, uh, considering that we have our meeting today and we hope we approve this. Uh, so uh, it will give uh, two or three days to finalize it. So the announcement will be made on Wednesday, March 31, 2021. So the contestants can start their writing their essays immediately after the announcement. Well, I don't know how we can announce the, uh, maybe the group, uh, our, our uh, coordinators will be help us uh, make the announcement. Uh, and uh, I suggest that uh, the subcommittee will do it also, the Milpitas Youth Commission and the uh, Milpitas Library. Um, on a uh, concerted effort to make the announcements by uh, issuing the flyers together with the entry form. So as again suggested, we'll give enough time for judges uh, to uh, work on a one week basis after the submission. So the proposed uh, start, uh, the, the proposed deadline for submission of entries will be uh, April 25, 2025, 21 at five o'clock PM. So entries received after 5 PM will be automatically disqualified. And then uh, the uh, judging will come in and uh, we hope to announce the winners uh, at the end of April, April 30, 2021 at about 2.30. I, I don't know if we have to have a Zoom meeting for this or just mere announcements, okay? 
Now, uh, working on the uh, budget for this uh, project, which I think, I don't know if I'm correct, we pegged it at 2,500. And uh, first we thought that uh, somehow uh, this will help out with the contestants uh, financially, if ever. And uh, if we have to think of other prices such as uh, um, uh, non, non, non money matters, uh, it will take more time and more efforts for us. So we decided to come up with here money uh, considerations. Uh, first price being 450, second price 350, third price 300, and fourth to 10 price will be 200 hits. Okay. So the flyer I sent. Uh, to each and every member of the uh, commissioners of uh, this uh, uh, information. Also the uh, forms, entry forms, uh, also have this information and uh, the proposal itself. Now as to the judges, we'll have to pick uh, some judges from ranging from five to seven. I don't know how, uh, how many we can because uh, I don't think, I don't know how many will be uh, submitting but because of the uh, financial uh, thing, uh, the, uh, it, might be, it might trigger them to join and expecting about 50 to 75 uh, contestants maybe. And uh, judges will be working hard and give them one week to do that. If not, then we can extend it for a uh, full seven days. Uh, so the partnership with the Youth Commission, we'll ask them to help as far as uh, distribution of the contest is concerned. Also, if we can submit the names of judges to participate and also the library also distribution and also uh, judges if they can submit. So entry forms uh, attached, the rubric we're finalizing it. Uh, in, uh, after all, it comes uh, with the judges that uh, we have a draft already and we're trying to finalize the rubric to be used by the judges in order to uh, judge the contest, contestants' uh, entries. So with this, uh, this is the proposal. And now um, I would like to present it to the body for discussion or approval of the said project. Well, thank you so much, LP, Ha, and Heli, uh, working on the project proposal. Uh, because I only got the proposal late uh, today afternoon, I added some notes. May I ask John, uh, did you see my uh, notes sent? I didn't have time to share with everybody, but I thought this is uh, good to, you know, to look at the notes all together. John, is it possible you can uh, share uh, my notes with, uh, yeah. with the group? Okay. Sophia, can you um, share that that document? It's, um, it's the the second ver the draft proposal. Yeah, sure. Lisa dash R. Yeah, I put in the file name. Yeah, first of all, I think a uh, topic is timely important uh, for the tobacco awareness and for use. We all know, you know, this is a growing concern in the community for the. Uh, for the use on the tobacco use. So I think this is a timely uh, topic. And uh, okay, let's see, Sophia. So yeah, I typed in my notes in the green color. So on this one, the uh, mechanics, the uh, I said, is it, there are two pumps actually uh, in the suggestion. So why do you support the tobacco free living, uh, free living style and why? Okay, is there a need to discourage the use of tobacco in any form? So may I suggest maybe uh, simplify it, just the use in tobacco? The reason is because as uh, uh, the group printed, uh, pointed out, because this is going to include from grade seven to grade 12. So actually you are including middle school and high school altogether. So I saw maybe simplifying a general topic that then people can either write down their own life experience or they can do it as a semi-academic paper. This is just my suggestion and I will defer that to the subcommittee for, uh, uh, for consideration. And if we move to the next page, please, Sophia. Yeah, and for the entry form, for the birth date, I would suggest just to use months and the year 
because otherwise we are collecting too much pri uh, privacy inf information because you only need the month and the year, right, to determine uh, the age group. Is that correct? Um, yeah, maybe, yeah. Yes, uh, it's... Uh... Yeah, correct. LP, would that be okay? That's fine. Yes. yes. Okay. And Heli? Mm -hmm. Okay, I heard from uh -huh. okay. And the number three length of entry is 350 to 400 words, typewritten, double-spaced, uh, times new Roman. I checked with John, and is it possible somebody, and also for Renee, is it possible somebody from Park and Rec Department can help us to handle this submission and set up the format requirement for electronic submission? There are a couple of reasons. First of all, for example, the font requirement Times New, New uh, Roman, I don't think that's a font on MacBook, for example. If kids are using MacBook, that's, they cannot find, uh, find that font. Uh, and the double space the type written in uh, e electronic format may be a problem. So I would suggest uh, if a city staff can handle this, so mm. may I ask John, and Renee, do we have the resources? Anybody from Park and Rec uh, uh, or Youth Services can help us with this? May I, may I say something? Sure. Okay, so the reason why we chose those um, format is because school, Milpitas, I have, uh, I have four grandchildren who go to Milpitas schools. Uh, they use the MLA format especially the ones in high school and middle school. And this is good practice for them to apply. But the MLA format actually is a citation format that's mostly used, for example, in reference for citations, okay? The punctuations, for example, all included. And uh, actually these this conditions are part of the MLA, but I have seen people not using 12 points in MLA. MLA actually does not specify the font size, for example. Uh, for for uh, in writing form, for especially essays and all this stuff for publication, they use Times New Roman and uh, 12 points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, as I said, what about the submission? Can the city have, have somebody to set up? Uh, okay, yes. and Okay. Yes, uh, John first, yeah. and I see Noni has a comment. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that as um, as a problem. Um, and either myself or, or potentially even um, uh, the youth services coordinator, uh, especially if we're looking to to partner with with youth programs. Um, I, I think that's that's um, an excellent avenue. And then we could also, um, you know, work as far as the the replication of the of the items and the. Uh, getting those to the judges. Okay. We can help support that. Okay, and I see Noli's comment. Her comment, may I uh, allow me to read it to you? Uh, she's not uh, certain about that 350 to 400 words is sufficient. That allows maybe one to two paragraphs, which is not enough space to develop a thesis. No, it's say, about it's about three paragraphs, say, one and a half yes. pages. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's and, two pages. Uh, I think. Yeah. It's two pages, yeah. double spaced, and uh, also uh, Noni is suggesting 600 to 800 words as a minimum. I see high. I see why you, the subcommittee is suggesting a lower number of words as uh, uh, the limit. It's because you have middle school, so grade seven to to uh, to eight to nine, and uh, also I just saw Rika's comment. She's an <laughs> educator. And she can help with the MLA format is a stand, a standardized format used, okay? So yeah. we got some uh, comments over there. And in case uh, needed to revise or keep as it is. Right now, I as I said, you know, for me, I see your points. I think that's a result of the de uh, deliberation. And uh, I see Renee raised uh, your hand. Hands, yeah, yeah. please. So just a little bit of feedback for the commission. Um, so Recreation and Community Services has done a number of competitions, both writing, essay, poetry, and poster. And if you are opening this up for junior high and high school, it's not quite 
uh, even level playing fields to um, to compare a seventh or an eighth grade essay to a 12th grade essay, especially if you are proposing to offer a monetary award. So if that's the desire of the commission to span six grade levels, you should probably break it out um, into a seven, eight, nine, or a 10, 11, 12 to make it fair. The, um, the writing level of a seventh grader to a 12th grader is a huge divide. Um, and there's a lot of different um, English and language and writing classes that you get later on in high school. So I would suggest that. I don't think respectfully you need their birth date, the, the least amount of personal information. You have their grade level and you have their age. I think that's sufficient. Um, if you're opening this up to all Milpitas students, irregardless of which school they go to, you might wanna know what school they attend. Uh, which I think you have there. But other than that, you, I don't think you want to get into um, personal information like that. Um, and then the length of the words, your length of the words should be equivalent to any cash, uh, cash award. So just consider, you know, what they are writing for. Okay. Uh, for now, and I think John uh, has some other comments as well. Thank you for LP? that. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you for that, Renee. Actually, we uh, have been uh, doing the uh, essay contest at three levels. And uh, considering the, uh, that stuff for elementary, middle school, and high school every, every time. Now, this time we thought that it should be an open essay contest. Uh, first, uh, because of the situation that we have, and also as to the length of uh, entries, this will also help. Uh, the judges uh, shorten their time in trying to go through it because uh, before we have been having a problem, we had uh, it at 7.50 and we had a hard time judging to a lot of entries uh, from 500 to 750. I don't know if, well, we had all the time at that time, but this time we have a very short period of time. And the reason why the, the uh, subcommittee thought of a shortened uh, number of words Actually, I proposed the 500, 350 to 500, but uh, well, they put it at 400. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's up to you for if we have to put it uh, a little. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, commensurate to the financial reward for winners, uh, 400 maybe, but uh, it's not how the length of service is just a presentation of how organized they are. They can come up with a very uh, uh, substantive presentation with 350 to 400, I guess. Okay, thank you, LP. And uh, I see John raised the hand. Yeah, I, um, I LP had mentioned um, just in, as far as the rush to, to get this out. And I, and I, I wanna offer um, that maybe we um, take a st step back and, and really um, polish this. Um, I think I've been on this commission for three years and, and we haven't had this in the, in the last three years. I think it's been four or five uh, since we've last hosted um, this event. It's, it's normally in the spring, but these are, these are unique times. I, I think there's, um, there, there really wouldn't be an issue with, um, you know, pushing this out a couple months, uh, possibly uh, working on some of these logistics and, and staff would, would um, certainly support helping. Uh, with with the flyer, with the promotion, with the marketing, uh, working in coordination with uh, youth services uh, and the Youth Advisory Commission. Um, maybe May would be um, the time to get uh, information out and, and maybe the, uh, and to actually solicit the submissions. And June would be, um, you know, the time to, to actually um, collect those and judge those. Uh, and then another issue is, uh, the budget, uh, the, the holding account budget for the library commission right now is $2,000. So, you know, the initial proposal um, exceeds that. I don't know if there was a thought of, of other, other partnerships with the friends of the library or with um, um, the youth advisory commission, uh, but that, that exceeds what we have in the holding account. So I guess another question is, do we want to, um, you know, use all that amount and exhaust um, you know, the current um, 
fundamental. Um, so I, I think there's opportunities to, uh, it just seems like we need to work through these logistics over the course of a couple meetings. Uh, and in trying to rush this, I think uh, we might not uh, get the same uh, quality outcome as if we thought through this a little bit more, maybe, um, and I'd be happy to work with the subcommittee um, offline um, to flush out some more of these logistics and details and then work in, like I said, work in partnership with, with our youth services coordinator and uh, youth advisory commission. Uh, th th those are my comments right now. Thank you, John. And before I uh, turn the table to Dana, Sophia, would you please move this page a little bit up? Okay, you some of the questions. Thank you, Renee, and uh, thank you, uh, John, for the comments, and thank you, LP, for the explanation. I would like to turn to Dana for your comments, please. Yeah, I uh, I had the same uh, thoughts that John uh, just presented. That uh, the the timeline seemed to be um, a little bit too rushed, uh, especially with uh, you know the pandemic and. Uh, I, I believe the kids are going to be going back to school. Uh, so, so I think John has a very good point. We should consider maybe a little bit of a delay. June um, be, would be good. And also, I also had the same, um, it's like John was reading my mind on the budget. Um, I kind of thought $2,500 exceeded what we, we had. Um, you know, as you know, I, I, I serve as a board member on the Friends, and uh, I can present uh, the Delta, the $500 Delta, uh, at our next meeting. So, so again, meshing with what John is saying, it'll give me a little bit of time to get the extra uh, money from the Friends. Uh, the, the, what, what, uh, what has been done so far is good. I think the idea is good. It's something we should uh, support, but I think, you know, we got to listen. John, I think has a good point about the timeline. That's it. Okay, can thank I you. say something? Yeah, thank you, Dana and LP. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I understand, John, uh, you have a good point, but the reason why we peg it at April, uh, because it was in the uh, budget, uh, I mean, in the uh, project, proposal, I mean, the timetable for us that it was earmarked for uh, April. And working. We're working we're working on that calendar. So, and then uh, we thought that uh, uh, it should be within that calendar and we have that time frame. So if we have to move this, maybe that's fine. It's okay. Okay, Great. thank you, LP. And before I turn it to John, actually, you can see my question on the screen. So my first question to John is, uh, the city budget allocation, the $2,000 holding account, do we need any approval from the city council to use the money or, or are we free to use the money as proceed if we need to get a confirmation, of course, our project timeline will be pushed back. And also, uh, I think it will be great uh, because this is a really hard topic, okay? The tobacco awareness. Okay, for use. So I will recommend the public community librarian Kelly can direct a, a youth services librarian to help build a re resource list on the topic for reference. So the, uh, the contestants will actually use the library resources, you know, to research the topic and then write the essays. So may I turn this back to John? Yeah, I comments? just wanted to to follow up um, that um, it, it was it was not um, set forth with the work plan as far as the budget. So it would need to actually uh, get the approval um, possibly on consent, but it would need the city council's approval. And probably the earliest we can, we can get that would be um, the second session in April. So um, we're probably talking three or four weeks before that would get the formal approval to move forward with that um, disbursement from from the holding account. Okay, thank hey, you, Can John. I say something uh, uh, in con concerning with that uh, budget thing? Yeah, when we started this project, when I was the chair for the first time, that's about 10 or 10 years ago, uh, the money was appropriated. And then uh, when we started the project, all we need to do is we email the mayor and then uh, for the release of the funds. 
that's it. Uh, because it uh, has been approved already for that project, it was earmarked for that project. All we need to do is request for the uh, money so it will be implemented for said project. I don't know the procedure this time. And uh, if uh, John can clear that uh, with us. And uh, yes, and in the past, we had a city council approval and uh, just, uh, you know, release the money to use. But as you know, many cities, including Milpitas, the budget situation is uh, definitely, you know, very exceptional compared with any year in history. So what has been approved probably was the budget year of 20, uh, 2019 to 2020, the money we did not uh, use, but anyway, and uh, we would like to ask uh, city staff, John, help us to clarify that with the city council. And also we have councilwoman uh, Chua on this meeting and we definitely will ask her help which uh, this item goes to go to the city council uh, meeting agenda. And uh, we hope with her support, we will get the consent uh, you know, in time to have the event uh, help, uh, held. Okay, next one is uh, Dana. Dana, raise the hand and please. Dana, you muted yourself. You may want to unmute, okay? By the second or third week in April, I can get an answer from the Friends Board. Uh, we can have a virtual vote on the $500. So um, I'll propose that uh, and I'll, let, I'll send the answer to John so that he'll know he could get $500 from the Friends. Okay, excellent. And uh, I see Councilwoman uh, Trow raise her hand. And so Evelyn, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, is, is that, uh, John, is that part of the 2021 20, budget, the 2000? Because well, if that, it is, you, they, don't, they don't need to get approval from the council. Well, it's, it's, it's in the holding account. Um, you know that that I know we did the purchase of the um, uh, the panels about what a year year and a half two years ago, um, but that's my understanding um, as as far as uh, you know that it wasn't set forth with the work work plan, uh, possibly a little bit different than than the last time we hosted this event. Um, Renee, can you? Um, can, yeah. Can you? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Chu, uh, council member, you're correct. So they did have a work plan that went forward for the, um, let's see, we're in the 2021 fiscal year. So the work plan item was there, but there was no budget requested at the time. So we do need to bring forward to request city council approve, basically moving the money from the holding account um, to a chargeable account. So if there's any um, cash reward, for the essay contest that we can write those checks. So it's so the procedural. It, you might wanna put that in consent. Uh -huh, exactly. April yep. 6th. So it would just be automatically approved. If the, um, I'll check the timeline for the meeting on the 6th, but yeah, the goal would be to put it on consent for sure. Okay, good. Yeah. I think that should solve that problem mm -hmm. yeah. for the funding. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, Renee and John. Thank you for everybody's support. And uh, with that, I would uh, suggest to revise the deadline for the communication plan allows because, you know, all the dates in this plan have to be moved. Okay, definitely it is not likely to happen to start on March 31st. So Sophia, can you move a little bit up? Okay, um, up, up, okay, uh, to item, yeah, number six. Yeah. And uh, for the Zoom meeting to announce the winners, I would suggest uh, if we can check with city ID staff for possible dates that a virtual ceremony can be held. And uh, we can wait until uh, that Zoom meeting to announce the winners, okay? Because if we announce the winners in advance, that might well only the winners will show up at the Zoom meeting. Right, so we want we, the subcommittee may create a little bit of program. Okay, probably we uh, half an hour or so with the announcement of the winners. And I think to give, uh, I remember when we had the AC contest held in the past years, 
uh, when we announced the winners at the last of the event at 5 p.m., we invited the mayor and the vice mayor to join our event. We saw the students were cheering uh, with each other, you know, from which school, right? So I would love to see an event like that to be celebrated among the, all the contestants and their supporters. And as to the day of the announcement, and uh, here is proposed on a Friday afternoon. So my suggestion is, will a Saturday or Sunday afternoon work better? I will ask the subcommittee to consider, okay? Yeah, because if the Friday afternoon is a school day, I'm not sure who will, <laughs> who will be able to attend. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a good point because uh, if we plan to have it on a Zoom or something, maybe a Saturday will be a uh, very appropriate thing. But uh, I will suggest that, uh, can we put all these suggestions or, uh, together and yes. then we meet uh, with, uh, with John and the subcommittee uh, to yeah. be able to uh, dress out all the, uh, the uh, things we need to put together and uh, for, final, uh, for the final version of the proposal. Yes. And that's definitely, you know, the uh, direct, I would like to have everybody's comments all put together for the subcommittee to iron out all the wrinkles. And uh, then also raise a, raise a hand. Yes, yeah, just a quick question concerning, as of today, do we have any judges identified? And if not, I would think that would be a, you know, high priority to recruit um, judges, how are they going to be selected? How are they going to be um, attracted, uh, found? Um, do, do we have uh, any? Along that line, not, not yet, uh, Dana, but we can easily tap those who have been judges before. We have a lot of judges before, ranging from uh, 10 to 20 uh, judges who have been serving, mm -hmm. and uh, surely they will be. Uh, they will be uh, happy to be top again. So will it and be the su subcommittee's task to find the judges? Yes. 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 Okay. But allow me to introduce our own members. LP has been a very experienced educator, right? For adult learning and uh, the GED training. And uh, Heli is a high school teacher, right? And the Rekha, who, uh, who we just meet today is an educator too. So actually from our own commission, we have three candidates. I will recommend to serve as a judge. And if any other member, okay, Dana, Nongli, and if any other member is interested in serving as a judge, please do. Okay, this is, a, this is our commission's event and your input will be greatly appreciated. The next one, uh, uh, raise, raising hand is, uh, was from Zhang. Yeah, I just I suggest. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to um, maybe offer a, a, a consideration as far as the prizes again. Uh, you, uh, to Nate, Renee's comment, as far as breaking that up, um, it, it just seems like um, uh, you get more seventh, eighth, ninth graders if they knew they were, you know, competing against themselves as opposed to eleventh and twelfth graders, um, and. And given that we have 2,000 uh, right now, uh, potentially 500 more from uh, from the friends, um, you know, I, th I think that would still be a, an attractive a prize if it was two, two, 250 for first place, and then and then downward. And, and I don't know if um, if if there's really the um, I think there's seven uh, prizes of $200 each, so possibly that could be reduced. Uh, just to stretch the dollars a little bit further, uh, just so we don't exhaust the holding account, and then and then moving forward, I think um, I think it shines a light on our our need to possibly uh, do some fundraising and to bolster the holding account. So maybe this partnership with uh, the youth programs and youth advisory commission is an opportunity to do some fundraising down the road uh, to to prop, you know to bolster this event and others. Uh, so maybe just consider maybe a lesser amount for this one, but but you know fundraising in, in the future to to offer larger prizes in the future. Thank you, John. And I see Nongli has a comment and LP raised a hand. So before I I uh, 
take care of Noni's comment and the LP's raising hand. Allow me to explain a little bit here. In the past, when we had the essay contest, actually we had a lot of middle school entries and with very few entries from the high school students. However, this time because of the topic, I think we probably will get more from the high school contestants and probably less from the middle school. Of course, you know, this is just an estimate. And uh, uh, Renee already raised a very good point of whether or not to, you know, we should break uh, into additional groups because putting the seventh grade kid uh, to compete with the 12th grade uh, high school uh, senior uh, doesn't to be a fair game. And Noni raised uh, her comment, uh, uh, wrote uh, her comment that she thinks if we do break the contest into two groups for middle high schoolers, the price levels will need to be revised and the total budget recalculated. Until that is done, we have, and we have a final number, take the taking the request for additional money to the friends should wait. That's known as comment. And I will bring this back to LP. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, as far as uh, you suggesting uh, members of the subcommittee to be judges, uh, I am, uh, I, I, I am against it. Uh, I think uh, the members of the subcommittee should not be judges. So anybody right. from the commission, yes, but uh, not uh, the members of the subcommittee. Yeah, well said. I, that's, for, that's why I suggested to have city staff to handle the electronic submission. So the contest, uh, their, you know, their identity will be uh, uh, adapted you know, found the entry, so the judges would not would not know the name, you know, on the each entry. So that's the uh, logistics of it. To uh, you know, to have the our committee members in, if you want to ser uh, serve on the judge, but I will table that to the subcommittee to decide. Okay, if you already decided, uh, none of your subcommittee, uh, none of our commissioners should uh, should serve on the judges group. Uh, I think that definitely will work as well, but it also adds additional burden to your group to solicit uh, the judges to serve. So I will let you decide, okay? And uh, then the flyer, uh, that's a really nice uh, uh, flyer uh, from the Microsoft publisher, but I think this is a city event and the city communication plan usually has the style sheet requirement, right? And also, for example, from the library events, you always see the light blue, right? The logo, logo and et cetera. So I would suggest, you know, if we can revise, uh, after we have the dates uh, pushed back and confirmed and the director, uh, uh, John, to work with the youth services coordinator and to have a, a flyer uh, finalized it and have that pushed out through the city's communication channels. And at the meantime, as LP suggested, use services and our commissioner uh, members, you can also help to uh, uh, send the announcements through the social media channel, right? So that I think the burden our net to get, <laughs> to get more, uh, students to write to participate, I, I think that's uh, the common goal of ours, okay? And uh, the last one is the judges and uh, I will, you know, just uh, uh, have, have that to be worked out by LP and the group. And the, once again, you know, the, uh, for the logistics, if city staff can help us to, um, set up the electronic uh, submission requirement and uh, take care of the submission. Then city staff actually can help us to disseminate the essay entries, instructions and mail them as a packet to the judges with the Rubik's form, okay? And the reason for city staff to handle this is, you know, if, if any of us is doing it, we don't have any account to reimburse the expense, for example, and uh, the, I think the uh, logistics part will be much uh, easier to handle by city staff. That's just my com um, comment, as the city staff uh, capacity allows. I know park and rec people are 
all super busy. You also have the vaccine meal plan and everything else. So I see Renee already raised her hand. So I will table this to Renee for comment, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. So I think we can definitely create a clearinghouse for the essay contests into a general um, email inbox. Um, I would suggest though that we don't mail out packets. The judges can review the essays online and then we can provide the scoring sheets based on the rubric that's developed um, to save paper for everybody. Um, and then when they're done with the essays, then they basically delete them. So we'll, we'll reject some of the information, but um, we can set that up for sure. Mailing packets, I, we could save a couple trees and um, review it online. Um, unless somebody is, has email that's compromised, we can obviously accommodate that, but um, we'll, we can do that in email packet style. Um, we have had a couple contests where we do make accommodations for families who may not have um, email access and Wi-Fi to email their essays. So we always give a mail-in or a drop-off option for families. So um, John could work with the mm -hmm. subcommittee to uh, further tease out the application so that they can email it or they can drop it off by a certain deadline. And this then if we get drop-offs, we can scan them and email them the same way as with the regular packet, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Renee, for the super useful information. And I think the details can be worked out. And I didn't actually write, uh, put down mail them in packet. So I should put the E in parentheses email, right? So whatever you, uh, it, 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 it can be done. And uh, we are relying on your expertise and the resources to make this a uh, smooth sailing. Okay, uh, Sophia, uh, if you move uh, down, and the rubrics, once again, you know, I would like to invite community librarian Kelly and the youth services librarian, if you, oh, uh, sorry, I have a typo, applicable, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I will, <laughs> there's uh, one letter missing. So anyway, so if the judge rubrics need uh, any additional conditions need to be added, please let the subcommittee know. And for this subcommittee, you know, I, once again, I want to thank all three dedicated and devoted uh, commissioners working on the event. And I'm sorry, I did not join the meeting because I didn't realize because if I join the meeting, I will be in violation of the Brown Act. So in other words, right now is in a dedicated situation. I couldn't even ask, you know, three subcommittee mem members, let's have a discussion before our regular meeting. Then that four of us will be in violation of the Brown Act. So I'm sure uh, everything else uh, have been discussed uh, and considered. So for now, I would like to ask. So for today, I think our consent is we already approved this event as a go and uh, we need to iron out some of the logistics. And uh, uh, John, do we still need a motion to approve in co concept and uh, direct the subcommittee to work with you for the details? Yes. Okay. So any motion to take the proposal? I'm not sure how to wor uh, word this motion. Dana, any suggestions? How should I, how a motion can be made? Um. Okay, what, what is the proper name of what we're looking at here? Just the draft of the... Uh, essay contest, yeah. Uh, okay, so... Draft the, the proposal, yeah. Draft, essay contest, draft proposal. The, the um, uh, recommendation would be to um, uh, approve the uh, draft uh, per our meeting such that uh, the subcommittee can meet with John to finalize it. Um, and, and I think we have to add a time frame for yeah. maybe- We also would like to invite uh, all other commissioners have a timeline to submit the comments, right? So then the subcommittee will have all the comments together and the in discussion no. with John to finalize. Wow. Um, 
So the motion could be to um, approve the, the draft effort uh, along with allowing uh, commissioners to send their inputs to John uh, such that the subcommittee can finalize it for a June June deadline, maybe a pick a date in June. June can, can I be say too something late. real yeah. fast as a point of order is that you cannot all give direction on an agendized item for tonight separately after the meeting because if there's conflicting comments and orders, then the subcommittee cannot pick through that. So I think if you're comfortable with the discussion as it was received tonight, your recommendation could be to receive the draft um, essay program and plan and direct the subcommittee and staff to take the suggestions that were received tonight and then implement the program after city council approval. Perfect, that's the motion. Okay. Then you're all aboard. Yeah, because you know, okay. we can't wait by the time we meet next time, the event exactly. is already in full swing and mm -hmm. close to the final line. And uh, this event has been approved in the past. And so, perfect. Thank you, Renee, for your suggestion. Yeah. And then uh, would you like to uh, uh, make the motion? I'll make the motion uh, to approve per Renee Lorenzen's uh, good suggestion. Mm -hmm. I second. Anybody who is second? Okay, Harry second. And uh, we have to do the roll call and to count the vote, okay? So first I would like to go to Ha. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, thank you Ha. LP? Aye. Okay. Haley? Yes. Dana? Yes. And Noni? Okay, I see Noni's yes. And the Rekha? Yes. Perfect. Okay. And once again, you know, I think we need the entire commission's help, but I'm not sure how the discussion and without violation of the Brown Act, et cetera. So my commitment is after you settle down with all the details, please let the entire commission know. So every one of us can help, you know, to implement it, execute this effort, okay? Because otherwise, if we have any other sub subgroup uh, discussions, that, and outside of the subcommittee, we may be, you know, you know violated the Brown Act. Okay. So thank you all for all your support to make this happen. And we are counting on you, LP, Ha, and Haley. <laughs> we are counting on three of you. And uh, thank you, Renee. Thank you, John. And uh, also thank you, Kelly, and uh, your staff's help to make this happen. And I see the very good prize award, you know, during this difficult time. This is not an easy topic to write. I hope also we give enough time for the students to reflect, to write on something. And, uh, you know, we discussed this before. This is an essay contest. Uh, if people want to write, you know, in any format they want around this topic. So we, we were always surprised to, to see really good, excellent entries. I remember I think, you know, I think the first and the second, uh, each time we, we got somebody, a kid um, actually who volunteered the library for a long time. He wrote, uh, he, he saw the voices between the library columns in the building. That was so beautiful. And we would like to see all the Milpita students engage and participate in this event. So that's hope for a full success of this event. Okay, thank you. And we, we have 40 on that and let's continue on tonight's agenda. Sorry, this is already 8.42 uh, this evening. And uh, next item is any update from the library donor program, Dana? Um, nothing new, just a reminder, uh, as each of you visits the library, take a look at the donor board outside Kelly's office and pick up one of the flyers and, um, you know, maybe help us look for potential donors. All right. Thank you, Dana. 
And uh, any update from the Friends of the Mill Peters Library report? Uh, Nonly hasn't typed yeah. anything yet. I, I, oh yeah, she did, she did. okay. She did, and uh, she's saying uh, the friends uh, are not taking the donations currently. County has decided to organize the reopening of all branch friends groups. So we await further guidance from them. It sounded like they were waiting for Santa Clara to drop down to the orange tier and then prioritize the opening library services first followed by allowing donations. I've posted that to the Milpitas Friends Facebook pages. So I continue to fill the questions from the public. I will definitely make a new post as soon as donations reopen. Okay, that's a Noni's report. And I saw Noni's post to the Facebook. And thank you all for all the work. And Dana, please. Yes, uh, as the assistant treasurer, uh, the Friends are in really good financial um, shape uh, again. Thanks to Noni, uh, we have eighty-four thousand dollars in the bank. Um, the money coming in from uh, Noni's Amazon book sales uh, per month exceeds what we're paying out. So, uh, even having funded eight thousand dollars to support the Distinguished Author Series by the County Library. Uh, we're still in very good financial shape. So that's why I feel reasonably confident that we could get uh, whatever money uh, we need to support um, the uh, essay contest. Uh, and one last thing, uh, go to the Santa Clara County District website, uh, sccld.org and look at this Distinguished Author Series. Um, they, they have really good, uh, authors coming in. One of them is Joyce Carol Oates, who is one of the most prolific authors in the whole country. And so somehow they've attracted her to address everybody online. So uh, I don't want to take up any more time. Just go to the website and look at the um, Distinguished Author Series. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah, go thank ahead. you, Dana. It's very exciting that the Friends uh, is able to support the Distinguished uh, Author Series. Last year, I listened to John Carahu about the Serenos mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. And uh, years ago, I learned from public libraries in Ohio and Colorado, actually they spend the big bucks on inviting the distinguished authors to their community. And of course, now all the events are held uh, virtually and uh, definitely looking for, uh, forward to, uh, to it. Any other questions for Dana and Nolly? We also added a $10,000 line item for the children's area furniture upgrade. So uh, we're eventually we're going to start spending this big uh, uh, balance we have in the bank. Perfect. Okay, thank you, Dana. And the next one, uh, one may, uh, may I turn this to Jennifer for the County Librarian Report? Good evening. It's nice to see you all. I'm going to quickly share my screen. Make sure. Are you all seeing that from the beginning? Yes. yes. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much. Well, Dana, you're stealing my thunder, but I will give you all a quick update on happenings with the district. Um, so even as we are, let me close these, even as we are continuing um, to expand our services, of course, we're continuing to have a lot of virtual options. So yay, we all have a little bit longer to uh, pay our taxes <laughs> if you're so lucky, but our libraries do continue to support those efforts with computer appointments. Um, tax forms are available. You certainly can call our librarians who will point you to excellent resources and websites. So we continue to look at that virtual support. So our website has lots of great links and information there. Oh, as I mentioned, um, we now have wireless printing available. So you actually can go to our website, find out how you can upload through the um, 
internet very easily, go to the library and use one of our print stations right there in Milpitas. So we're excited that we can offer this service to the community at this time. And as Dana so kindly pointed out, we're very excited about the Distinguished Author Series of 2021. It will kick off on April 14th with Dr. Sapolsky and a great lineup. So thank you, of course, to the friends for their support of this program. And we're very excited to be able to continue. This is our second year of the series. It will be virtual this year, but again, a really wonderful lineup of moderated conversations with a really eclectic and interesting group. So you can all attend online via Zoom. I encourage you to um, check out the website. This is just a quick highlight of the next six weeks and um, please do join us for those fun programs. All right, that is, I'm going to stop sharing. I don't want to steal anybody else's thunder. As you know, we are moving through the tiers and the county and the library is looking at the best next steps on our services. So I'm happy to take any questions, but certainly want to turn it over to Kelly for more specific um, questions about there in Milpitas, and then we're happy to take questions. Any questions from our group? I walked in Milpitas Library a couple of times in the past two weeks. I'm amazed with how it is well organized. And also, I think it's the first time for long, I see so many brand new Chinese books on the shelf. <laughs> because you usually, they are all gone. So, so I was very happy with the offering. And thank you, uh, Kelly uh, and the county staff for continuing adding to the collection. And uh, I see a lot of smiling faces. And uh, I see total, out of a total eight self-checkout machines, you have six open right now, right? So people are, uh, and a lot of holds. And uh, it's, it's probably not 10,000 anymore, but still a lot on the tables. So the library is really uh, you know, well received by the community. And I was able to get in, uh, uh, on the weekdays, uh, much easier than on the weekend. On the weekend, there's uh, always a line and uh, you know, people are, um, were waiting very patiently in the line. And I, see, I saw a lot of exciting kids with uh, their own bags. They, they don't come out empty handed. They came, <laughs> they came out with a huge bags of picture books, etc. Any other questions for uh, Jennifer? Okay, and uh, Kelly, the uh, community librarian report, please. All right, well, I will share my screen. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so I have a, a very brief report for you today. I thought I'd just start off with a picture of the plaque from our Cesar Chavez reading area since we are coming up on celebrating uh, Cesar Chavez Day this week. So it seemed appropriate. And since you can't all get into that area right now to see it, I, I put it on the slideshow for you. Uh, so as mentioned, we have started lobby service once again, which Yulan was able to walk into our library and the staff are doing a great job with putting up these wonderful attractive displays. We began our lobby service again on April 15th. And we do have our holds available for pickup. Uh, computer appointments are available. Uh, we are doing those book bundles that have proven very, very popular. Um, I don't know if we're ever going to be able to not do book bundles now. Um, they are definitely well loved, especially by parents. And uh, I had one adult who said that she's now reading things she never thought she would try by uh, taking out some of these adult fiction bundles. So um, a whole new avenue of uh, book recommendations for us. Um, so I just wanted to do an overview of what's keeping us busy. And as Yulan mentioned, our lobby service is super popular. We had 500 people through the doors last Saturday. So um, within our service hours. So people are definitely coming and they're the during the week is a little quieter, but we're getting over 400 already on the Fridays. So people people want their items, they want their books. 
we have reduced the holds. We are down to 500, 5,945 when I checked it uh, last Friday, which is a big reduction from the 10,000, but still more than double what we have in a normal time. So we're right up there with those holds. And of course, we're still doing all of our online programming, our story times. Uh, we have yoga, our conversation club. And this uh, last month in March, our children's librarians were actually able to do class visits. They couldn't go out to see the first grades, uh, but they did three first grade class visits with Alexander Rose Elementary. So all those first graders and their parents got an intro to the library from the librarians. So that was great. And what else are we doing? We're doing a lot of planning and preparation and uh, Part of that planning is we are preparing to open the building up to patrons. So not just our lobby area, but the building. And that will be happening on April 19th. So you heard it here first, folks. Uh, <laughs> we're getting in at the, at the top of this news. So uh, we're very busy making sure the library is safe and tidy and everything's in place um, to welcome people back in. And I know, um, there's going to be a lot of excited children to be able to get their hands on all of those books down there in that collection. So just wanted to also highlight as usual a couple of um, programs and resources. So this one is our tutoring pods. It has begun already. This is um, online tutoring. It's a coach to student ratio of one tutor to up to eight students. It's for all grades. We have elementary school and middle and high school grade groups available. There is still some room in this cohort for people to sign up. So that's why I wanted to promote it to you. If you have anyone that you think um, would benefit from this uh, tutoring program, I can send flyers out. Um, I've also put the information on this slide on where they can log in to register for this. So this began on March 22nd and it will go through to the end of May. So um, so great service there. And this is our, our second round of doing this. So hopefully we'll get some Milpita students that are interested in joining one of these tutoring pods. And then I wanted to highlight a new but not so new resource, um, our previous lynda.com, which had this great um, library of uh, tutorials and help has joined or with LinkedIn. So now it really has a lot more in the way of that business focus as well. So uh, with the library card, you can sign up to use LinkedIn Learning um, and they have a variety of courses from non-educational like learning to play the ukulele my favorite through to <laughs> all kinds of technology courses how to use photoshop full adobe suite as well as um, preparation for all of those professional certification exams so if someone out there is looking at adobe certification or cisco especially since we're in milpitas and we have cisco right there they do do all of the preparation for the cisco certification exams right there in linkedin learning so i just wanted to promote that and there's a link there on how you can find out more information and it's right there with your library card and then finally a volunteer opportunity for teens i know we have teens that are still looking for community service hours and uh, our teen services librarians have put together another way that they can earn those uh, volunteer hours online. So it's called Teen Stream Plus, and there's a website there with more information. Teens can work to make short educational videos about a variety of topics and share them, and they will receive community service hours for those. And there's a couple of sample it's up there, one from the Saratoga um, group of uh, youth library, youth library board there. So that's a, a great place to go and look. Okay, I am going to stop sharing. And I'm happy to take any questions while I try and figure out where my stop sharing button has gone.
Any questions from our group? Uh, well, with the reopening date of April 19th to open the building, I think, you know, in line with uh, our uh, AC contest uh, um, PR rolling out after the city council uh, approved the allocation of the uh, fund to use, I think, you know, a lot of exciting opportunities are ahead of us. Finally, we see the light at the end of tunnel to return to normalcy. This is really exciting. And uh, I want to turn this to Councilwoman Chua. Evelyn, would you like to give us an yes, uh, update uh, on the you. council? Thank you, Chair. And I'm going to do this really fast yeah, because, uh, wow, it's 8 o'clock already. So anyway, uh, Renee, if you can just share your screen and go into the ADU Mondays, because I want to speak on that one. I like that project. But I, while Renee is prepping that, I would like to again welcome and thank you in advance to our new commissioner, Rekha, for joining our library. And, and thank you to our subcommittee. Great job on the essay contest uh, preparation and, and good input from, uh, from everybody, even from, uh, from Renee and everybody else, Helly in the chair and, and all of you commissioners and great to see you again. Mm, we are, uh, is it there, Renee? Okay, but we, we are still working on the budget. Uh, everybody's busy working on the budget, the city staff management, and also uh, the city council. We, oh, great. One of the initiatives that I introduced and it's now being worked on and it's, it has launched on May 15. It's called ADU Mondays. And what it is, is you can sign up uh, online for 30 minutes and ask any questions about ADUs. ADUs are like the granny homes that you can build outside your home or next or attached or detached or junior ADUs or the junior ADUs, you can convert your garages into an ADU. So I'm really excited about that. We're hoping to get more ADUs in the city because it helps increase our affordable housing. And the next one is uh, actually Renee, uh, the essay contest reminds me of the work that Renee and, and Ned, the planning director, uh, worked on. They worked on an ordinance about uh, about a resolution. Was it a, a resolution or an, it's a resolution, right? Yeah, um, we, we received grant funds, council yeah. member. Yes. Yes. So it's really in line with what they worked on is a resolution on on vaping, you, you know, you eat e-cigarettes and which is in line with your essay on tobacco, the harms of tobacco, on smoking tobacco. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I did a good job on that one. Um, we are, we have approved our general plan. And what is a general plan? A general plan is really the roadmap on how we built our city for the next 20 years. The last general plan we have, what about over tw 20 years ago, so now we, knew, we have a new general plan. This tells you where you can have your commercial, your industrial, your residential, or a mixed use uh, community in our city. It also includes park and the commercial areas and innovation areas and opportunity areas. It's really exciting. So we have now a roadmap on how we develop our city for the next 20 years. And what else? The, the first meeting of the homeless task force happened this month. I think it's March 10th. So they are, they, I think there another meeting will be next week or yes, next week. So we're busy and thank you all for good work. And I, it reminded me, I was once a judge on the essay contest and I liked the idea of uh, it was Stephen, I think Stephen was the, 
was guiding us. And the idea of Rene about ice them in separating them out into the different grades really works for us. And it's amazing what you can read. Well, there were like almost 200 entries when we were doing our, our judging and it was so much fun. So anybody who's a judge is gonna have a great experience. It's awesome. Thank you all and see you next time. Thank you, council member. Any questions? Okay. And we are very close. This is Nile Street. We are three minutes past uh, the time. The last item is the future agenda items. I wonder if uh, all of us will be interested in some board, uh, board training. So we get a new members, Susan and Rekha, and uh, we haven't been trained for long. For example, um, I was struggling with the uh, the Brown Act for you. <laughs> Definitely I need more training on that part. And also I think uh, for our board effectiveness, I would like to put on our next um, meeting agenda and to ask John to, to solicit uh, available city resources and to schedule a training, you know, that's for the next uh, meeting agenda. Any other questions? Thank you for your participation. Oh yeah, Dana, please. Uh, you are muting yourself. Please unmute. Yeah. But what is the date of our next meeting? Uh, John, do you have the date? That's May, right? Uh, May 17th, is that correct? May 17th is the third Monday of yes. the month of May. Okay, May 17th is our next meeting. Okay, Thank until you. then, stay well and healthy. And uh, we would like to see the event, uh, you know, uh, uh, rolling in full speed. And let's all give a hand to that AC contest uh, uh, event, okay? And uh, after details are uh, confirmed and uh, please help to announce it and uh, we will help, we will, we will chip in to help. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Ha, anybody second? Okay, said, thank you, Dana. And always favor say aye. 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 Have a nice evening. Goodbye to Thank all. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you, everyone. Good night. Good night.